Hi, welcome to the Mohua Show. My name is Mohua Chinappa and I am an author, entrepreneur and ex-housewife. This podcast is about everything from business to technology to arts to lifestyle but done and spoken imandari se. Hi, in this episode, we have with us Avinash Lohana. He's made a significant mark in the world of entertainment journalism. We'll find out a little bit more about this. But before that, Avinash is an assistant editor, entertainment at Pink Villa. I think all of us know about Pink Villa. He brings with him a wealth of experience as a journalist with his extensive portfolio of news breaks and an insightful on-camera interview. Avinash has established himself as a notable figure in the industry. his ability to humanize conversations which is really really difficult you know while asking relevant and thought provoking questions has garnered him the respect and admiration of an ash passion for engaging dialogue extends beyond the camera and he's also served as a moderator at the prestigious international film festival of india and he's also participated in various panel discussions so it's a real pleasure to have with us avinash today and really find out about his insights experiences and avinash was actually a banker who went on to become a journalist so we are going to get down to all those questions so the first question avinash is tell us a little bit about your journey in the field of journalism and what motivated you to specialize in entertainment so firstly thank you for that lovely introduction um, and uh, yeah i you know my journey of journalism is very very interesting uh, so my i think i get the love and passion for cinema from my mother because uh, she was always obsessed with cinema and cinema stars and their lives so i remember when i used to be in school i would come home at around 2 2 30 and the first thing i would do is start reading bombay times and later on it became mumbai mirror and i would read them from cover to cover so i think that interest was always there uh, and i wanted to pursue journalism but uh, since i come from a very conservative family none of us have ever done anything with this business So my father particularly was not very keen on letting me do BMM. So I did my commerce, and then I started with uh, I worked with two MNCs. Uh, so the correct word of uh, my previous journalism background is MNCs and not really a banker. And um, so when I um, I was working there, I realized this is definitely not something I want to do. um so i started researching for journalism uh, uh, courses across the country and that's when i came across uh, zevias institute of communications i um, i remember it was the last day of applying for my course uh, there and uh, i it was a it was a form of 2500 rupees and i didn't have that money in my in my account because it was the month end i had run out of money so my then girlfriend and now wife uh, paid for the form and uh, that's how i uh, i gave my entrance exam it was followed by a person interview and while all of this was going on i didn't tell my parents that i'm going through this process but once i got the admission is when i went up to them and i said uh, hey i want to really do journalism i can't do the regular 9 to 5 job it's not something that i enjoy and uh, that should uh, by god's grace by then uh, because i had anyway got the admission uh, they allowed me to pursue journalism it was anyway a 9 months course i said just give me this 9 months of my life it was a complete ddlj moment to judge simran jajili apni zindagi so uh, yeah i did that and that's how my uh, whole journey in the business started ja vinash जीले अपनी जिंदगी तो असिस्टेंट एडिटर आप हो पिंक विला में वॉट आर दी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज दैट अंडर टेक इन कवरिंग द एंटरटेनमेंट इंडस्ट्री एट लास्ट आई डू अ लॉट एंड इट्स ऑफकोर्स आई रियली बिलीव इन टीम वर्क एंड वी ऑल डू अ लॉट ऑफ स्टफ टूगेदर बट एट लास्ट आई डू वीडियो इंटरव्यूज एंड आई 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 डू दीज exclusive news stories about the entertainment business so you know with thousands of news breaks to your credit what has been the most memorable or impactful story you've covered so far aur wo kyun memorable raha hamare sunne walon ke liye aap bataiye avinash in terms of news breaks there have been many but i'll tell you particularly two which i felt and you know as a journalist i gen- and i'm not i'm not saying it because i'm talking to you or i'm on a podcast i genuinely believe in impact journalism journalism that makes people think so two uh stories that i particularly did as a print journalist um, was um, 
you remember when uh, Nina Gupta had put up a post uh, saying that uh, she was she's she's a national award winning actress. She lives in Bombay and she's willing to do more work. At that point in time, I went and spoke to many other actresses uh, of a certain vintage, and uh, it included you know actresses like Rohini Hattal Reddy ji and uh, so, Renuka Shanu ji, Archana Puran Singh, and. Um, you know, they all spoke and this was pre-OTT era. So anyway, the rules for them were far in between. And uh, they spoke about their plight that, you know, um, how they are not getting good roles to play despite being s- such good actresses and such celebrated actresses. And one thing that really struck with me back then was I remember Rohini ji told me that uh, in the guise of a look test, they wanted me to do an audition. Uh, now you can imagine she's the only BAFTA award winning actress in the country. Uh, she got it for her performance as Kasturba Gandhi in Ben Kingsley's Gandhi. And uh, uh, she's a national award winning actress. She's a NSD pass out. And despite that, she had to go through a phase where somebody wanted to cast her, but they didn't directly tell her. So they said, hey, let's do a look test. And wo bolne ke baad, they were just testing her for an audition for the role. So, but... And I remember when this uh, feature came out, I got many, many calls from so many people from the business, people, uh, my fellow journalists, my relatives who were really, really appreciative because it really kind of sent out a message saying that, you know, we need to cast uh, as per uh, the correct representation, uh, whether it's an actor of a certain age or of of certain uh, orientation. Uh, so it really made that kind of an impact. The other one was when um, Shruti Hassan spoke to me about the importance of taking a break and uh, you know how it helped her mental health and how it helped her um, you know find a direction to her uh, to her career as well. Um, and I I always uh, prefer talking about topics like this because it it really it really make, puts out a message in the public um, that that makes an impact. So these two, I really are very, very close to my heart. But one has to admit, you know, that film industry does want women who look like Barbie dolls and that's where the money also keeps rolling. So I think we are really far away where, uh, you know, real women with real bodies and real looks are um, going to be part of mainstream cinema. But coming down to the number of interviews that you've done with celebrities, you know, you're really known for this human touch and the empathy that you uh, you know, approach all these conversations where your guest obviously becomes very comfortable and then you have a genuine connection. Where has this come into your personality? Was there something that has uh, made you an empath or were you always like this? Um, if you were to look back at your own journey, Avinash. Uh, so firstly, I'd like to address what you say that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is, uh, I mean, we do, we probably do not cast in the most accurate way, but I think yes, we are getting there. Uh, and I, I'm someone who really looks at to the positive side in life. And I think uh, the business is also changing in the way they are casting and looking at actresses also now. Uh, good roles are being written for them as well. And of course, it's not as much as it is uh, for probably say the male counterparts, but it is, I think we're, we're getting there. So I think that should for that. Also, whereas an impact is concerned, I genuinely believe in being kind in life. I uh, I do not approach any interview with an in, with an intention to sensationalize it. Uh, I will ask difficult questions. I will ask questions that people want to know about that particular celebrity. But I will do it in a very respectful way, where I show them my intent that I'm not here to make uh, a mockery out of your situation. Uh, and this really starts with making them comfortable even before we start rolling. Uh, now it's become far easier because it's been many years in the business. So many of them know me also now. So they open up because they know I've not come with a bad intention. But even if you don't know someone, you you know, before you start rolling, you speak to them. You you just probably, and you know, it could be anything genuine. Ask about what they did, if they came from a vacation, how was their vacation like? Just make them comfortable with you. And uh, once they do that, uh, it becomes far easier to have a conversation with them. And just in general, be nice to them. There's there's no need to make sensationalism out of anything and everything. 
but this must be really difficult you know to navigate the challenges you know balancing the need for objective reporting because obviously pingvilla also has its uh, you know demands and especially in the industry that uh, you do work in which is entertainment which totally thrives on gossip and you know sensationalism so how do you bring about the balance like i said i ask questions i never shy away from asking a, a question which is important or relevant but like i said i do it with a lot of respect uh, i uh, i'll give you an example i did an interview with hani singh recently where i uh, spoke to him about uh, him going through bipolar disorder and his uh, struggle with mental health and uh, before i asked him about that i told him about how i have also had a, a challenge at one point with my mental health so there is a kind of empathy that you set with your uh, guest at that point in time that you know i know what you have gone through and you can trust me with that information so i think that conveying my personal story also makes the person in front of me believe in me that you know this this person uh, will understand the information that i'm going to give him uh and that's how i go about it and yet pink will also we are very particular about the ethics so we don't really compromise on ethics for the, like i said sensationalism or anything we ask anything and everything very responsibly you know in today's age of social media and instant news there's like constantly there are so many times that you know they declare that a star is dead and uh, you know there's so much of inaccuracy and the reliability so how do you kind of uh, navigate these sort of situations when they happen because me as a podcaster i you know i am also constantly trying to figure out what's happening how it's relevant because we need to be relevant right uh, you know especially in the business that we are in so how do you manage that i completely agree what you're saying that sometimes uh, especially in the digital era everybody is in the rush to break the news first and it is something that i really frown upon anything like even a death news or any news for that matter whenever you hear something you always uh, go out and cross check with two three people and uh, once you show you put out information that like that but yeah it's social media is really in a rush uh, especially these days to do a lot of stuff which is not correct i also would be very interested you know for our listeners to know that you've been part of the international film festival of india as a moderator all the time i'm constantly thinking banker and this is like a real reinvention of yourself right and it must have been such an exciting opportunity could you highlight any memorable discussion or moment that you've had when i was at ifi um, i was speaking to mukesh shabra and shitesh mehta and uh, we spoke about casting uh, at large and how the process has changed over the years uh, but what what really struck me during that conversation was an audience interaction i remember when the um, and it's amazing to see that you know that's what i love about uh, our country and our audience that they are so uh, open about their point of view towards a certain um, celebrity so i remember this this gentleman from the audience just stood up and he started talking about uh, a senior actor being cast and uh, you know according to him the choices that that actor is making is really not correct and i i remember uh, uh, during that conversation i i initially got a little upset that half can you you know just start the uh, criticizing someone and i i i agree to that also but that person also came with a lot of passion for cinema which i which i believe uh, really resonated with me uh, i'm not saying what he his criticism was correct or uh, wrong but uh, i i like the passion which i saw at international film festival other thing we also spoke about the uh, the opportunities that otd brings for many many actors you know how um, uh, earlier uh, character actors are mostly um, you know only character actors in films and television shows but with otd they were they they have so many opportunities and they have so many diverse characters to play uh, which is also such a uh this spite for casting directors you know because then they can also experiment and cast actors in different parts and not just stick to stereotypical uh, pointers that you've got from filmmakers so it was a very very wide discussion which was about everything cross me including representation of casting the right actors depending on their age gender orientation etc wonderful avinash what advice would you like to give to aspiring journalists who want to pursue a career in entertainment journalism what skills and qualities do they need to develop in order to succeed 
trade in this absolutely extremely competitive field. Firstly, don't become a journalist to click selfies with stars. If that is your intention, then you will never be able to become a good entertainment journalist. If you want to become a content creator, then that's a different thing. And I always say that there is a huge difference between these two words. One is a journalism and one is content creation. If you want to become a journalist, you have to respect your position. Uh, you have to respect your space in the society. So if you just have an intention, you know, I want to hop up with the stars and I'll be called to the parties and I'll hang out with them then don't become a journalist with that intention because then you won't be able to serve the profession correctly. As far as uh, uh, skills are concerned, everything can be learned on the job except ethics. So come with ethics uh, and respect for your job and probably passion for your job. And I think everything else could be learned on, on the job. Thank you so much, Avinash. This was fantastic. And I'm sure so many of our listeners who are wanting to take up uh, you know, a profession and they have the ambition of becoming entertainment journalists, which is such a huge field today. They have learned a lot from you. And thanks for being on the Mohua Show. And gratitude and have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much. To you, our dearest listeners, you can find us on your favorite streaming services, Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, and of course, on all other major streaming services. With loads of love, we are The Mohua Show, where we talk Imandari Seh.